Hi Church, I'm Pastor Jeffrey Chua. Welcome to our SIBKL online service. Every year for our community weekend, we feature our blessed ministry as well as what we do at Life Community Center. But this year, in view of the current COVID-19 situation in the country, we will share with you what SIBKL has been doing, not only via BLESS and our Life Community Center, but through our COVID-19 fund and collaborations with CRESS uh, and NGOs like Makan Kongsi. I will share more on our SIBKL COVID-19 uh, aid program and how can you be a part of this program later. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that even as we consider uh, what we can do and what we will do, Lord, even through our community aid program, I pray, Lord, that you will anoint my lips, that even as we bring forth the message, Lord, of how we can be a blessing to our community, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you anoint my lips, that truly, Lord, the message that I bring uh, today, O oh Lord, will be truly from you and you alone. So I thank you, Lord, even as you use me as your mouthpiece, O oh Lord, even to bring forth this message to your people. We thank you, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next, uh, before I share on what we do at Bless Ministry and SIB Community Aid Program, let us consider a portion of scripture where the title of my sermon, Grace That Exceeds Expectation, is based on. So let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, reading from uh, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. You can read it from your Bibles or follow me on screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, reading from verse 1. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian uh, churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty well up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectation. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. Praise God for the reading of His Word. So Macedonia is in northern Greece, and it consists of Philippi, Thessalonica, and the Berea uh, churches. And this form uh, the main bulk of the Macedonian churches. So there was famine in the land much worse than what we are facing now in our country with the raging COVID-19 situation. So what is it about the Macedonians giving that is out of the ordinary? So what happened here was truly extraordinary. It exceeded expectations. So God's grace is the focus here. Grace of God bestowed upon believers in Macedonia, and we see something which is extremely special in verse 2, and that is, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty well up in rich generosity. So there are four key words in verse 2. The first word is trial, which another meaning is affliction. The second word is poverty. Then we see joy and we see generosity. So if you look at these four key words, how can these four key words uh, form their, their, and well up within them uh, joy and generosity. So the Greek word for trial or affliction is this word, tiflis, 
meaning distress, tribulation, anguish, something that causes pain and suffering. So this is definitely a work of God's grace that goes beyond human ability and limitations. So what the Macedonians did places their act squarely in the realm of God's grace and intervention. When the power of the Holy Spirit is invited into our worst challenges, our toughest battles, our deepest pain, the results are amazing. It enables you and I to live in a manner that exceeds our human ability and limitations. Looking at these five verses in 2 Corinthians 8, I want to leave three points for you to consider using the acronym CRY. I'm not asking you to cry only for your situation, but just as we have prayed and we have worshipped for more than 40 days now in our Malaysian United Firewall, it is now to turn our cries to God into action. And here is what we need to do. We need to consecrate, we need to respond, and we need to yield to God. So let's look at the first acronym, which is the letter C, and that is consecrate. Let's read verse 5, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. So the priority of the Macedonians were first and foremost to God. They consecrated themselves to God first and afterwards they were free to submit to the leadership to give to help and aid the needy. So my dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, when we consecrate ourselves Firstly, to God, His enabling grace is given to us and all that we have and all that we are belongs to the Lord. As we learn from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, that we are not our own, but we have been bought with a price, the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the second letter is respond. So in 2 Corinthians 8, reading from verse 2, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty well up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded and another version say they urgently begged with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. We all know the saving grace of God, which is the unmerited favor of God, that we are all saved by grace through faith. The expression of grace that enabled the Macedonians to respond in the way that they did is the grace that enables, that empowers when the grace of God is upon you and I to do something it is not hard or burdensome, but instead you will have joy and well up in rich generosity like the Macedonians. Amen? Amen. And lastly, the, the last uh, letter in this acronym is the word you, uh, 2 Corinthians verse 5, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and by the will of God, also to us. So when we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, when we yield ourselves to the will of God, then giving and helping the poor, the needy, the marginalized will be something which is not burdensome, but it will be light 
and it will be easy. So G. Campbell Morgan has this to say, contributions to the work of the Lord are only valuable as they are the gifts of those who are themselves yielded to God. So when you yield yourself to the will of God, when you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, then this whole subject of giving, this subject of helping others will become easy and it, the burden will be very light. So God's grace comes to help us to stand victoriously and to help others even in the midst of our own afflictions. The key to experiencing His grace and power is to yield to the power of His Holy Spirit. Tell God, I don't have what it takes. The grace of God is available to all of us. It is when we are weak that He is strong. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen and Amen. So now let me quickly tell you uh, about what we do in Bless Ministry and what this SIBKL Community Aid Program is all about. So as you can see from your screen, what does BLESS stands for? BLESS simply is the acronym for Bringing Life Through Evangelism and Social Services. If you turn your attention now to the screen, uh, you will see an org chart and these are the ministries under uh, my care. So let's focus on the left-hand side of your screen, which are in red uh, boxes. So this is the blessed ministry. The head of ministry is Sister Catherine Pua. And under BLESS, we have four uh, sub-ministries, which is BLESS Cafe, uh, which is unfortunately closed now uh, because of COVID-19. The BLESS Shops uh, and the Senior Operations Manager is Sister Tina Chong. Uh, currently, BLESS Shops is also closed. Crossroad, which is the uh, drug rehabilitation centers uh, that we support, and of course, the Bless Refugees, uh, the learning centers that we support. And Noah is also one of the leaderonomics coach uh, under the Bless Refugees. So this is uh, what Bless Ministry consists of, the four sub-ministries that you see on the screen. So what are the income generators for Bless Ministry? So when Bless Shop and Bless Cafe uh, were open, uh, whatever income that we get from Bless Shop and Bless Cafe supports these four initiatives uh, that we do in Bless Ministry, which is the feeding and the general provisions, uh, education books and school stationaries uh, for the refugee schools, leadership program for refugee students, uh, and discipleship for the teachers and leaders. And we also support the urban poor and the marginalized communities. And last but not least, we also uh, sponsor and support the drug rehabilitation centers. So the impact of COVID-19, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, Bless Shop uh, has been closed throughout the EMCO period and Bless Cafe is closed indefinitely. But despite the adverse impact on our income due to the COVID-19, Bless Ministry continues to support 10 refugee schools 
142 of their teachers. We have a feeding program for 755 students on a daily basis at the respective schools and communities. And also, uh, we monthly we support Roof Learning Center and Mikalai School of Destiny, and we support five drug rehabs, the Kenosis Homes, Morning Glory and Rainbow Homes, and fifthly, we help urban poor families as well. So these are some pictures uh, of what we do in Blessed Ministry, and, and uh, these are some pictures of the feeding program that we do. Uh, and these uh, are the online classes that we do with the refugee school cent uh, and the centers. And these are the leaderonomics program that you see on screen uh, at Zomi Education Center and at Peace uh, Education Center. Then we also are involved in Roof Education Center and Mikalai School of Destiny. And these are the five uh, centers uh, for drug rehabilitation that we are involved in. Uh, Kenosis Morning Glory, Kenosis Home KL, uh, Rainbow Home for Girls, uh, uh, and uh, of course, Kenosis Home in Mantin. So it is truly the desire of the refugee students that you have seen in some of the photos that they can further their studies and take exams similar to our government level SPM exam. But because of their refugee status, they are unable to do so. So let us now view this video and hear the pleas of the chairman of the Association of Chin Refugees, the teachers and the students of the refugee schools for us to understand how can we as the church reach out to them and help them in their time of need? So let's play the video now. I came to Malaysia, but then um, I thought Malaysia said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a very good education. But I didn't have it because I just realized that, you know, like refugee has no right to attend to school. So they only have one choice, that is to go to community-based learning center to get their education. In a refugee school, the foreigner teacher volunteered to teach us and there was a time that we uh, don't have enough teacher, so we learn to study by ourselves. So for us in BLESS, we believe that everyone, irrespective of whether they are a migrant or they are a citizen, everyone should have proper education. But when they have education, they, they are going to know how to manage their life and then how to help their parents, how to bring their parents to another level of life. Education is the best response to make a better life for them and for environment or community. They can find a better job and this will take them out of the poverty cycle. If I don't have education, I can't do anything, so I need education. Without education background, without having any degree, what I, like, you know, in my life, being a leader, things are very narrow and some and somehow very limited. And there are so many students like me out there as foreigners. They simply quit school and go to work just because they, they can't afford to study, not because they would like to work or anything. Some, they need to work part-time at night or study in the morning and work part-time at night to help their family. For us in BLESS Ministry, we have been sending our refugee students to the Refugee Learning Centre. Uh, my favourite subject is science and math and accounting and history. 
So I completed my IGCSE last year November, and it was great. I did pretty well. I have A star for Accounts and Biology and A for Math and English. The challenges faced by the learning center during MCOs are uh, financial. So when it's come to the budgets, we are very limited. So we are paying this rental fee, rental fee, and then also we are paying uh, electricity and waters and then internet. We are we are providing them uh, <clears throat> breakfast, lunch, three hundred and twenty nine students every month for their foods. It costs us like you know almost you know ten thousand because you know uh, some some teachers some students they do uh, some parents they have no jobs so ACA is paying them for their internet bill you know we don't want them to miss every single online course it's MCO so there is no income for our family uh, like I have uh, three children still need milk and diaper for that we are uh, quite difficult. I feel really bad uh, in uh, our family or uh, my teacher, other family. Uh, I saw them, they need really help. So my father has been working really hard, but it is barely enough to pay rent and put food on the table. So it is very difficult for, for me to. Uh, we are uh, getting need and need is uh yeah money is really need for our family if i don't have education i would be sad because education is the second chance for me i'm offense so i don't have parents and i live with my brother so if i want to achieve my dream i need ed education so that it will help me with my life we want to bring the grace that we extend to them even to another level. That is, we not only feed them, we not only provide them with money, but we want to educate them, we want to equip them, we want to set them up to win so that when they look to the future, there is a hope and there is a purpose for each one of them. This is what we are trying to achieve even with this Bless a Life program. So you have watched the video and if God has really moved your heart as you listen to their pleas in the video, there is a link that you see on screen now. So if you would like to contribute and come alongside us to help uh, the, the students uh, in order to be able to pay for the exam fees, as well as to bless and support a refugee teacher who has lost their income, please follow the link that you see on screen and mark your giving as Bless a Life. And also, if you would like to sign up as a Bless volunteer, please contact Catherine at sibkl.org.my and she will attend uh, to your request to be a volunteer. So next, I will move on to our community aid program and this will be the focus for the next 10 minutes or so. So why are we doing all this? As you can see on the screen, we want to do this and we want to rally all of us because we want to contend as one man. So how can we shine our firewall together? We have prayed for so long, even in our Malaysian United Firewall. And now it is to turn our cries to God into action. So this, as you can see in, in your screen, uh, is a picture of how we as a firewall can contend as one man and you see different groups 
being represented even in this chart. You see the cell groups, the staff team, the workplace ministry, the life community center, the next generation, connect ministry, young adults, uh, the MAC team, uh, even the, the prayer counseling, and of course, bless. So all of us in SIBKL, we can come together to contend as one man and we can truly shine our firewall together. Amen. Let's put what we have prayed for into action now. So how can you play a part? So under the Community Aid Program, there are three main pillars. The first pillar is what I call the financial aid, where we have helped many even through our SIB COVID-19 fund. So there are six uh, initiatives under this COVID-19 fund, and I will go through one by one later on. The one in the middle is our collaboration with Crest and uh, Clang Valley Passes Fellowship, as well as the NECF. And what we can do here is you can volunteer uh, to be part of this because they are wanting to set up a quarantine center for category one and two uh, COVID-19 uh, patients uh, and those families which are not infected, they are positive. So this is like a reverse quarantine center for them as well. So we are also looking at setting up a COVID-19 response call center and they really need volunteers to come alongside them to help them in this area. So you can sign up as either, either a medical or a non-medical volunteer. Last but not least, we are also looking at food aid and we have tied up with Makan Kong Si and of course we have our very own Life Community Centre. So under the SIB KL COVID-19 Fund, so who have we helped so far? If you can turn your eyes to the screen right now, under the medical frontliners, the medical supplies, equipment, and food to the frontliners, we have helped 11 times, but this number is truly understated because uh, I only take into account those that have been uh, draw down from the COVID-19 fund. So there are so many generous people out there and thank you SIBKL, you are truly a generous lot. So those who contributed directly to the hospitals, we did not account it here. So definitely this 11 that you see on your screen is an understated number. Next, for the refugee, the migrants, we provide uh, food aid, provisions, financial assistance, and we also help uh, many uh, migrant workers and the refugees. Uh, it was a bumper year for them. Many of them delivered babies, so they have no money to pay for the hospital bills. So we pick up the tag and uh, 1,143. Uh, and again, this is an understated number because even if we bless, let's say, 50 families, we only account it as one. Next is the urban poor NGO and churches, and this include the aid given out by Life Community Center 835, uh, the BM Congregation OA uh, Orang Asli churches, including Sungai Bulo, uh, 100, 8, 1890, and of course, uh, for our own SIB KL congregation, 109 of our members have been helped. So in total, it's 3988. So I intentionally did not put the RM value there. So you can do whatever mental arithmetic and you will know that truly this is something uh, tremendous, something that truly thank you, SIB KL family. You are truly a generous lot. So thank you and thank you from the bottom of our, our hearts. So some individuals and families we have helped multiple times and that's why this number, like I've mentioned earlier, is an understated number. So let's quickly uh, 
show you some of the things that we have done even with the COVID-19 fund. So uh, we have supplied 60 oxygen tank. So this is uh, tank trolleys to Sungai Bulo Hospital. This was uh, on 17th of June. And the latest is we supplied 50 ripple mattresses to Hospital Kuala Lumpur. And this was on 19th of July, 2021. And you can see some of the photos. This is the refugees and the B40 that we have helped uh, by the BLESS Ministry. Uh, this is Life Community Centre and, and others that you see on your screen right now. Uh, and next, uh, this is B40 SIB BM Churches and the Orang Asli. Uh, and this is again SIB BM Churches and Orang Asli. This is Sungai Bulo uh, BM site. And last but not least, this is how you can make a contribution. And this is our appeal to you because we have helped so many people, especially uh, even during this EMCO time, our COVID-19 fund is fast depleting. So if God has placed in your heart to come alongside us to give and to contribute to this fund, you can see a link on screen right now. Uh, please mark your giving as C19. Then we will know that this giving is for the COVID-19 fund. So thank you so much, uh, SIBKL. You have been truly a blessing to so many people out there. Next, I would like to talk about the COVID uh, crisis response, uh, which is a tie-up uh, with CRES, with Clang Valley Pastors Fellowship, and with NECF. So from SIBKL side, uh, we have committed to a financial commitment uh, for the quarantine center, uh, as well as we have committed to support them through our volunteer support for both the quarantine center as well as the call center. So for the quarantine center, they need non-clinical and clinical volunteers. And for the call center, they need volunteers to man the lines and also to be counselors. Don't worry about training because once we receive uh, your intention to be a volunteer, we will definitely uh, arrange for training sessions. So again, uh, look at the link on screen right now or visit our SIB KL website and more details will be shown uh, and you can get more information through our website. Last but not least, uh, we have also collaborated with Makan Kongsi too. And truly, you have heard and you have read many news about Makan Kongsi, even from uh, the social media. So one of the greatest benefit of us partnering with Makan Kongsi is that the chairman of Makan Kongsi is also our SIB KL member and he's none other than our brother Lao Jin Kai. So uh, why reinvent the wheel when we have an ever ready platform and he is also our SIB KL member. So they have an ever ready platform and a network of nationwide partners currently totaling 115 who are working on the ground. They know the pulse of their respective communities and they know each and every one of the needs out there. So again, if you would like to come alongside us to partner with Makan Kongsi, uh, do sign up as a volunteer, uh, as, as a partner, and you can see this on the screen again, uh, or visit our SIB KL website. So in summary, for this community aid program, if you need help or you want to help, just go to our SIB KL website and there'll be a link there. And if you need help, you just cling on, click on the relevant link. Or if you want to help, uh, you will know what to do even as you visit our SIB KL website that you see on your screen right now. So dear friends, we are in for action and this is a call to action for SIB KL 
and for all of us tuning in right now. So this is our SIBKL Community Aid Program and just as the Lord has laid in our hearts to do this, that this is not just a good idea, but we believe that this is God's idea that we become a blessing and a channel of blessing even to the community out there. Amen. So in closing, let me summarize the sermon points. Consecrate ourselves to the Lord. C, the letter C, respond to the needs of the poor and needy. Yield your spirit man to God. God hears the cries of the poor and the oppressed. We as the church here in SIBKL, we must rise up and be the salt and light of the world to extend grace that exceeds expectation. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So even as I bring this to a close, let us pray and let us come together and let us shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, come together and contend as one man to help the communities out there. Let us pray. Father God, even as we have shared from your word and even as we have seen, O oh Lord, what we can do even to the community aid program, I pray in Jesus' name, O oh Lord, that you move our hearts, that even for us who are able to share even of uh, our wealth, uh, may we be like Joseph, O oh Lord, to open up our storehouses and, and bless the community and help the poor, the marginalized, the widows, the orphans, the, the, the people who are truly in need, O oh Lord, out there. And I pray in Jesus' name, O oh Lord, that truly this will be uh, not just our good idea, but it is truly your idea even to help the community out there. So enable us, give us the wisdom, give us the tenacity, give us, O oh Lord, uh, even an army of volunteers, O oh Lord, to come alongside us and may we shine forth our light to the communities out there. So we thank you, we bless you, O Lord, for this opportunity, O Lord, uh, to make a difference even in the life of individuals, families, and communities out there. We thank you, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So truly, we thank you once again for tuning in. And now may God bless you and keep you May He make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He turn His countenance towards each one of you and grant you His shalom.